This screencast regards using the Residue program for MATLAB. This program is in the Chapter 16 folder and will generate residue curves and a residue curve map. First, let's discuss the strategy that is used by the program. The program generates a single residue curve, as you can see here. For example, what we're going to do is choose a starting composition, such as represented by the red X. From that initial red X, we are going to generate a curve, first going towards the highest boiling point, or the terminus of the region. Now we typically don't know where this is, but the program will step us towards the terminus first. Then, after we determine that we're near one of the edges of the diagram, we return to X start again, with the red X, and then we start to step actually backwards towards the origin, seeking the origin of the region. Alright, so let's look at the code. I've got the software distribution in CHE Thermo. I'll go to MATLAB and then Chapter 16. And let's open Residue. You can see that Residue requires no inputs and returns a vector X store, which will have the compositions of the residue curve. You can see, see here comments about how we need a new X, X start for each curve. All the parameters for residue are entered within the code and therefore to change anything including the value of X start you do need to edit the code. Since the calculations are done using bubble temperatures at a fixed pressure we need vapor pressures. These are the ID numbers from the Antoine table for benzene, ethanol, and methanol. Always check to make sure that the ID numbers are correct for the components in the event that the Antoine table is updated. Here is where the value of X start is specified, and then it is normalized in the event that the compositions don't sum to 1. The program is distributed using the Uniquack method. And here you can see the parameters for benzene, ethanol, and methanol taken from the literature. Here is the AIJ matrix. We check to make sure that the number of components is 3. We look up the Antoine constants. We echo the names to assure that we're working with the right system. We save the value of X start as the starting point for X. Then we specify the step size to take. This step size generates reasonable curves. We specify an initial guess for temperature, as well as the pressure at which to generate the residue curves. We set up vectors to store our results for composition and for temperature. We then enter the loop to calculate upwards at higher temperatures. We append the current value of X to X store. We perform a bubble temperature calculation, and I'll show you that next. And then once the bubble temperature is found, we save that also. We then increment the value of X. We loop back and repeat the calculations towards the terminus. Note the terminus is determined when we have found something near the edge of the diagram. Then we repeat the same kind of a loop from the X start towards the origin. Here we plot the diagonal and then plot the generated residue curve. We append the temperatures to the stored values of X for convenience of output. The routine that generates the bubble temperature is here. The condition for a bubble temperature is that the Y's must sum to 1. To generate the Y's, we start with a, a guess for the temperature. We calculate the vapor pressures. 
We then need to calculate the activity coefficients if they depend on temperature, and for Uniquack they do. Then we calculate the K ratios and the Y values from the X's. All right, let's see how the program runs. First, I'll dock the code. I'll clear. And then because there are no inputs, I can simply click Run. And you can see it's generated the residue curve. And now I've indicated benzene as component 1 and ethanol as component 2. And so if you like to have certain components on the axes, then choose those coordinates as the first two coordinates. The value of x start, which was used, was 0.3 and 0.6, which would be a point about here. And so you can see the curve that was generated goes through that point. To generate another curve, let's generate one that's about at 0.15 and goes through 0.45. Leave this figure open. Alright, and I just click Run. Bring the figure to the front, and you can see 0 0.15, 0 0.45. And I just continue to do this. Let me generate a few more curves. Okay, so I've generated some more curves by just choosing other starting compositions. And you can see this fan shape that has resulted. I can tell that there is a separatrix running from an azeotrope here towards this edge of the diagram. Now one thing I cannot tell from the diagram itself is where is the origin and where is the terminus for each of these lines. You have to look at the residue curves that are in the background. Now here I have the temperatures as well as the compositions. And by looking at these you can determine where the origin and terminus are. So you can see here this is the lowest temperature which is going to be at 0.4 and basically 0 and so that's the lower edge of the diagram. So this represents the origin for all these curves and so there would be one terminus over here and another terminus over here. The top of the distillation would tend to go towards the origin and the bottom of a column would tend to go towards the terminus.